This evening, we have a number of presenters uh, and hosts. Uh, Damian Hardman will be speaking uh, shortly. He is the senior energy planner for the County of uh, Contra Costa and heads up the Bayren program for the county. My name is Doug Blakely. I'm a program manager with Sustainable Contra Costa. Uh, Ellie or Eliana Batrez uh, is assisting this evening. She's handling the slide pack. Colleen Nolan, also with Sustainable Contra Costa, will be speaking to one of the programs, uh, Cleaner Contra Costa. And we have two contractors with us this evening and one homeowner, Larry Waters with Electrify My Home and Rebecca Milliken will be speaking to a project that's been done recently in El Cerrito. And Arlen Roberts with Building Performance Professionals uh, will also be here. Uh, towards the end, the last half hour or so of the meeting, we will have uh, an opportunity for the contractors to take questions. Could we move on to the next slide, please? Uh, so I've introduced uh, the various speakers and uh, Damien, perhaps you'd like to uh, uh, introduce yourself and also speak a little bit about the evening as well. Hi, yeah, everyone. Um, I just wanna say thanks to all the attendees that are on tonight to um, take some time out of your evening to kind of get educated on what the programs are that are available for uh, energy efficiency rebates for single family homes. Um, and my name is Damian Hardman. I'm with Contra Costa County with the Department of Conservation and Development. I am uh, responsible for um, everything related to uh, the programs for the Bay Area Regional Energy Network for Contra Costa County. So, you know, if you're not happy with things or you're, you don't like the way the program is designed, those are things I like to hear about. Those are things that I take up to the other counties to discuss about program design and doing things that we need to do to improve our programs as well. So um, I just, I hope you learn a lot from tonight. There's gonna be a lot of uh, great speakers about a lot of good information um, and wish you the best for this evening and I'll leave it at that. Thanks, Doug. Thank you, Damien. And uh, at this time, I'd like to introduce Colleen Nolan. She's a community organizer with Sustainable Contra Costa. And uh, she and uh, Sustainable Contra Costa has been part of a program with a number of parties throughout Contra Costa County for the last two years. And she'll be talking about ways in which you can reduce your carbon footprint. So Colleen, please. Good evening, everyone. And thank you, Doug, for that great introduction. As he said, I'm here tonight to share information on a program that directly correlates with the upgrades and rebates from Bay Red. Next slide, please. This program is called the Cleaner Contra Costa Challenge. And this challenge is a free online platform where anyone who lives or works in the county can log on and find sustainable actions that they can complete in their home. And this platform is really unique and novel because it allows you to find over 80 sustainable actions to take in the home, as well as resources, such as resources through Bayron, to save money, save water and energy. This is a program that I'm really passionate about because it makes climate action fun, simple and social. You can find these sustainable actions and take them with others in your community. Next slide, please. And before I go on, the challenge was funded through a partnership uh, between Sustainable Contra Costa and Contra Costa County, as well as the cities of Walnut Creek, San Pablo, Antioch, and Moraga, and a generous grant from the Bay Area Air Quality Management District. So as I mentioned earlier, the challenge is a free online platform. This is what the landing page looks like. And here you'll see the basic idea. We all can join the challenge to create a cleaner, healthier community and save money. Uh, this program is a great way to find a wealth of resources in your community to save money while also helping the environment. You can see at the bottom, we have uh, over 1200 homes and I'm pleased to report we now have over 1280 homes. So you can join others in your community who are taking climate action and fighting climate change through simple household actions. 
The challenge is also available fully translated into Spanish. So if you're more comfortable interacting with Spanish resources, you can go up to the upper right hand corner of the challenge and just click on uh, English to switch it over to Spanish. So the core of the challenge is the actions page. And an action is something that you can complete in your home or your community to save money uh, or energy or water in your home. There's also a number of resources that have to do with food and household waste. So regardless of what you're interested in or how you'd like to save money or help the environment, we have actions that will work for you. So this one in particular is called Make a Meal Plan. And this one is a great uh, action to start with because we know that reducing food waste can get greatly help our wallets and help the environment. If we reduce food waste, we can save a lot of money sometimes, and we can reduce uh, the greenhouse gases that are produced when it breaks down in landfills. So each action works like this. It has a title and a short description, and you can even see your impact as well. You'll see a point value, which makes this a really fun project to participate in uh, if you are competition oriented. Uh, but each point actually correlates to one pound of carbon dioxide or water saved. You can put in what you're able to do. So for example, if you think you can reduce six cups or even more cups of food waste a week, you would put that in and your impact would save or would change. Uh, you can also see an estimate of any upfront cost, any time commitment, and any savings. So you can see if it's right for your household. Next, you can find steps and how-to guides. So regardless of whether you've heard of an action or maybe you are not familiar with it, you can find how-to guides that make it really easy to get started. Here, you'll find the action broken down into steps and you can click through each step and complete. And finally, you can find custom resources that will work for your situation. Uh, with the challenge, it's super easy to sign up and create an account. And when you sign up, you put in your city of residence. And this is how we give you custom resources that will work for your area. For example, the resources page you see here is from an action called Choose Green Electricity. This is a great option where you can actually power your home with solar energy without installing solar panels. So you can choose an option to get renewable energy from your electricity provider just by looking at this resources section. And finally, you can also form a team with others. We all know that it's easiest to take part in a project or a competition when working with others. So we highly recommend that folks who join the challenge form a team. Uh, just as with signing up, it's really easy to create a team. Uh, you fill in the name you would like, a short description, and other parameters, such as a picture if you'd like, and you will get a custom invitation link that you can send out to your friends. They'll click on that and they will be automatically added to the team. So it's really easy to see your impact added up together. This is an example of a team we formed at Sustainable Contra Costa, and you can see that so far, we've completed about 30 actions. Within the team, you can see the names of the households that are participating, and you can see how you're doing overall. We've been working together for a few months, and so far we've already saved eight tons of carbon dioxide. So though we're acting individually from our own homes, we can have a really big impact when we work together. Something to note as well is that when you join the challenge, your information is kept secure and it's not shared with any third parties. This program is not like a social media site. You can't click on other households and see how they're using energy. Uh, but if you'd like, you can post about what you're doing and show off your progress. And we believe that the challenge has something for everyone. We're really excited at having over 80 actions available. So whether you're on a budget uh, or you want to focus on items you could do with others in your household, you can find items that work for you. The challenge, like I said, has a plethora of resources. So whether you want to learn about the impacts of going paperless with your bills and your mail, 
or you want to do something more ambitious. Maybe you want to learn about purchasing an electric vehicle or switching out appliances. You can find resources on the challenge. We find that the average active household can reduce 5,000 pounds of carbon dioxide in the first six months and save about $500. So I invite you to join the challenge, uh, find actions that will work for your household and create a team. And finally, every good initiative, every good uh, competition has prizes available and the challenge is no exception. We want to honor the progress that folks in Contra Costa have made and also encourage more by offering prizes. We have a number of fantastic prizes available this month, including gift cards to local businesses like Rivertown Suites and Bill's Ace Hardware. Even by completing one action on the challenge, you can receive a free yard of mulch for your garden. So if you're interested in learning more, you can go to sustainablecoco.org or you can check out the URL on the screen right there. And finally, I'd like to recognize our progress on the challenge. Something that I love uh, being a quantitative person is that the challenge actually allows us to see the impact we've made over time. This is the progress we've had together as a county since April 2019. We have over 1200 homes participating and we've saved over $90,000 and over 360,000 gallons of water as well as 281 tons of carbon dioxide. So I invite you to check out the challenge, find actions that work for you, and take action with us. We now have many easy, accessible actions that we can use to fight climate change from the comfort of our own homes. So if you'd like to learn more or join the challenge, visit cleanercontracosta.org. It takes less than a minute to sign up and create your account. If you have any questions, again, you can visit sustainablecoco.org or contact me at colleen at sustainablecoco.org. Thank you all for your time and for being here tonight. Thank you, Colleen. Appreciate uh, the update on Cleaner Contra Costa. Uh, I'd like to uh, move on to um, acquaint everyone with the Bayren program, uh, the purpose of it, uh, the foundation of it, and what it offers in the way of opportunities to receive rebates for making energy uh, efficiency improvements to your homes. Um, next slide, please. Bayren actually stands for the Bay Area Regional Energy Network. And in this particular case, the nine uh, Bay Area counties have come together uh, to operate or to standardize a rebate program such that uh, the same rebates are available in Sonoma as are available in Santa Clara. Many of you have probably uh, seen uh, various programs that are supported by PG&E uh, that will offer various types of credits or uh, assistance in being able to replace the light bulbs in your home and so on. This is another um, facet of those same energy efficiency programs. Uh, this is managed or run through the California Public Utilities Commission. And so the counties uh, essentially present a budget uh, to the CPUC, who then uh, provides the funding, the funding that uh, is made available for the rebates. Uh, next slide, please. And uh, Bayren, is looking to do a number of different things with this uh, without going into every single dot on these uh, three larger dots. Uh, basically, uh, it is the governments uh, of these nine counties very interested in reducing the carbon footprints and improving the energy efficiency of the communities and of the residents in, the, in this area. And this comes down to uh, improving a number of different aspects of our lives. Uh, generally, uh, quality of life, uh, zero net energy, uh, improvements in both uh, single family homes, as well as public buildings and multifamily dwellings and so on. Next slide, please. Uh, as mentioned, uh, the program that we're going to be spending our time on tonight is the Home Plus Single Family Program. 
but there are uh, additional programs available for multifamily and also for businesses and so on. Uh, it encompasses, uh, it's kind of a coordinated, uh, all encompassing approach uh, that can also um, make available financing and uh, essentially try to tackle the uh, greenhouse gases and energy efficiency from a number of different perspectives. Next slide. When you look at any uh, typical residential uh, dwelling, there's a number of different aspects uh, where we all have issues with both the quality of uh, and the comfort levels inside the home, as well as how the energy is being used uh, to heat and cool and otherwise um, um, provide a, a controlled climate for uh, the spaces that we're living in. And uh, some of the items here that you see, uh, moisture in the attic may exist if uh, uh, the spaces aren't properly sealed off. Uh, most of us are probably familiar with having drafty rooms because of uh, improper or old sealing around windows and doors, uh, possibly even into the attic spaces or crawl spaces under the building. Uh, in uh, improperly balanced distribution of heat and cold, uh, heating and cooling between the rooms. Uh, most of you are probably familiar with the fact that uh, if you may have a room that's near the furnace uh, that is much warmer than uh, the room that's farthest away from the furnace and that probably doesn't change too much even uh, as you adjust the vents to try to adjust the airflow between the two. Um, there can also be quite a bit of dust that's uh, coming into the home through uh, some of these uh, various um, seeps and cracks that exist. Uh, mold and mildew can be a problem if uh, uh, climate control is, is not what it should be. Uh, nowadays, we're becoming more aware of the fact that indoor air spaces have a, quite a problem with uh, perhaps unsafe levels of carbon monoxide, particularly from the cooking. Um, the kitchens and so on. And uh, old and inefficient furnaces and air conditioners, certainly uh, there are massive improvements that can be made by updating the equipment. Bayran and the energy rebates which are available can address each of the items mentioned here. Move on, please. So indoor air quality, uh, it's even in uh, a situation where uh, we've had uh, the bad air quality of this past year as a general statement, um, indoor air quality can be quite a bit worse than outdoor air quality. And I think, yes. And we're spending a great deal of our time in buildings nowadays, especially true this past year. And uh, for those of you with uh, young children in the homes, uh, they are more susceptible to the problems that we're discussing here. And uh, there are a couple technologies. Our contractors will be able to speak to some of the testing uh, methods that exist for being able to determine the extent to which your home is uh, sealed uh, and whether or not you've got uh, issues with regard to airflow and so on. Next, please. And uh, it's very hard to see, at least in the version that I'm seeing here, but uh, nonetheless, there's a number of different avenues by which uh, air is either entering the home or else leaking away. As the uh, air leaks out into the attic or crawl spaces and so on, uh, usually that's air that you've spent a fair amount of money either heating or cooling. And so uh, in one measure or the other, it's inefficient for you to be losing that to the outside. Next, please. Um, insulation is part of the issue. Uh, insulation standards have gone up a great deal over the years. Uh, newer homes have thicker walls than the old homes did uh, back in the old days. Uh, and uh, both the attic and the crawl space uh, standards for insulation have steadily gone up uh, over the years. And so uh, this is something that we can help you both insulate your walls and insulate ceilings and crawl spaces. Uh, cooking, um, as I mentioned, this is quite a problem and in fact is a source of a great deal of uh, the indoor air quality problems. 
Uh, there is a move now uh, to move towards induction cooking, such as you see on the right, uh, in which there is no, um, uh, well, there's no natural gas being burned as opposed to a gas stove. And uh, generally speaking, uh, there's fewer fumes and various other types of off-gassing uh, that would affect uh, indoor air quality and create carbon monoxide problems. Next, please. One of the great moves that uh, is coming on now, and this is part of an overall trend towards reducing our uh, greenhouse gas emissions, reducing our carbon footprints, is the idea that we want to phase out natural gas in all of its different uses, uh, whether that happens to be water heaters or furnaces uh, or cooktops, uh, or even for that matter, uh, drying your clothes. Uh, one of the advantages of electricity is, of course, there's uh, no gases being given off, uh, no greenhouse gases, and the sources of the electricity can come from green sources. Uh, there's, uh, there's the ability, whether you have solar panels on your house or not, that you can actually uh, opt in through uh, the local uh, providers for 100% green energy being delivered to your home uh, by organizations like MCE, which is the, uh, the um, provider for a lot of the electricity in communities around the county. And so the idea is to be able to phase out natural gas and use electricity for all the things in our homes that we're used to using gas for, or have at least traditionally. Next. So where to start? Uh, there's a lot of different things that you can do, but uh, I would suggest uh, if you're just looking for general information aside from what we can offer here, please visit the uh, bayrenresidential.org site. We'll uh, come back to that site quite a bit in the next few slides because that's kind of the repository of the clearinghouse for the information related to the program. Next. Uh, so there's a number of different things that uh, are available to you and that you can access through that site. Uh, we do have uh, the rebates which are offered through the Bayren program. Uh, you can identify contractors who are participating in the program. Uh, we have an organization called the Energy Advisor. Uh, they can be contacted by uh, telephone or by email. And they serve as kind of a technical advisor uh, to help you perhaps sort through different um, uh, quotes that you may receive from different contractors uh, and they can actually help you decide which one would be best for you or uh, even help you decide uh, which contractor, which service, which type of retrofit might be best for you. And there's other types of uh, online evaluation kits and so on that you can access there as well. Next, please. One of the items that you'll find under the resources tab on the uh, page is a PDF that outlines uh, what is called the list of measures. And these are updated uh, periodically. Uh, the Bayron program itself has been uh, in place since uh, 2012, but as uh, the funding and various other things uh, change, uh, what they can offer uh, homeowners may change from year to year. And for those who will always ask, uh, this program is expected to be in place for the indefinite future. So it is something that you can take advantage of over a period of time. You can do something this year and come back next year and take advantage of other parts of the program at that time. This, this is an example of just a few of the things that do offer rebates. Uh, if you at this time don't have a modern updated smart thermostat, uh, you can put in something like a Nest or a Honeywell or something which basically uh, connects to uh, the internet so that you can control uh, temperature and so on and so forth remotely. Uh, this offers $150 rebate towards that. If you're sealing your ducts so that less leakage from the ducts is getting out into crawl spaces or if you need to replace the ducts, uh, the rebate amounts that are available for each of those actions are shown also here. Uh, on the attic insulation, one of the things about Bayren is that they tend to want to go above current code. And current code is an R40 uh, uh, standard for insulation to be able to qualify 
for uh, insulation rebate, you have to go to R44. So basically you're going somewhat over code. And in this particular case, the rebate is based on square footage. Uh, if you want to insulate your walls, uh, older buildings, uh, which most of us have in our homes, uh, have two by four framing. And the best that you can do there is R13. Uh, if you have a, a newer home, that's typically two by six framing and you can go to R19. Uh, and again, they, uh, the rebate is based on square footage up to a maximum of $1,000 for each of those uh, categories. Next. Please. Uh, speaking of, uh, in this case, uh, this is the water heater and um, you can replace an existing gas water heater with a new more efficient gas water heater and that will net you a $400 rebate. Uh, nowadays though, we are uh, again encouraging and incentivizing folks to switch over to heat pump technologies. And I won't go into that in great detail right now. The contractors can speak to it. But basically, uh, this is a, call it a two-way version of uh, the way that your refrigerator works. Uh, the refrigerator takes the heat from things that you put inside the refrigerator and it pumps the heat to the outside so that it cools down things that are inside. Think of a uh, heat pump as being a unit that can move heat in either direction. And in this particular case, uh, a much larger rebate is available uh, if you were to replace a, a gas heater uh, with a heat pump heater. And uh, these are more expensive, uh, but also over time, you'll save a great deal more energy uh, on, your, on your bills. Next, please. And again, without going through all of these, uh, replacing an older gas furnace with a newer, higher efficiency gas furnace uh, can in fact, uh, will net you uh, the $300 rebate uh, again, the heat pump unit uh, uh, will net you a larger uh, rebate. Um, now, one question that comes up quite frequently among homeowners is uh, most of you have furnaces. Many of you live in places where you have not had installed central air. Uh, and then you say, can you get a rebate if you put air conditioning in your home? The answer is uh, these rebates are only available if you are replacing existing equipment. So the idea is that we want to replace an existing load with newer, more efficient units that reduce the load. If you have not had central air up until now, uh, there's no VARIN rebate available for installing central air. On the other side, if you put in a heat pump uh, furnace unit, it all also can function as an air conditioner. So you basically get two uh, you, you're basically installed in, uh, a unit to replace your furnace, but you're also getting air conditioner at the, air conditioning at the same time. Next slide, please. And electrification of appliances, um, induction electric ranges uh, to replace uh, natural gas ranges. Uh, also, uh, this year we are offering uh, rebates for heat pumps of, to replace uh, gas uh, clothes dryers. Next slide, please. And uh, with COVID coming in last year, uh, as an extra incentive uh, to keep the program moving at this time, uh, we're, we're offering additional incentive uh, rebates on top of the ones listed in the previous slides. And most of them require that you do uh, multiple actions at the same time. Uh, but at the end of the day, uh, it does increase the uh, size of the rebate that, uh, that you can uh, receive. Next, please. Uh, people ask, uh, can we do the work ourselves? Can we use any contractor? And the answer is that we do have approved contractors. You can uh, search those on the uh, bayrainresidential.org site. Uh, we screen these uh, contractors. They are people who do work uh, throughout uh, their communities and have been in business, most of them for decades. Uh, so you may encounter them. You may have experience having worked with them before, but they do go through and are vetted uh, as to the Bayren uh, requirements. One of the things that the contractors do is that they are the ones who typically will verify that a qualifying action has been taken on your home 
and they may be the one who calculates the size of your rebate if there are several actions that have all been done at the same time. And they will uh, submit the paperwork such that uh, they submit the paperwork to the county so that you can receive the rebate, receive the check. Next, please. So choosing a contractor, uh, on the upper left of the Bay Run residential site, there is a find the contractor tab and you can go in, uh, search it out by specialty, by language uh, and various other ways. Um, and uh, the contact information is there. Uh, certainly we, uh, most of the contractors are quite happy to discuss uh, with you what you have in mind. And so there is that opportunity for you to begin the process and it would be like anything else if you had a kitchen remodel or if you had to replace uh, uh, or paint your home or something like that you might call uh, several contractors and uh, ask them to come out to take a look at what you needed to have done and, and what might be involved so uh, in this case it's pretty much the same thing next slide please uh, there are financing options, and I won't go into them here other than to say that uh, there are programs like Real and Pace and Hero, uh, which offer various types of funding options uh, to fund even some of the smaller uh, programs beyond or, or even to supplement what uh, you might do through Bayren, but also they're there to be able to handle some of the bigger things which we do not handle, such as replacement of windows, or installation of solar panels and so on and so forth. Next slide. And a few more programs that uh, basically dovetail with what we're offering through Bayren. Next slide. Uh, you can uh, basically uh, score your home uh, and determine uh, whether or not uh, there are particular items that you may want to address through some of the rebates. Next. The Home Energy Advisor, uh, the 800 number is uh, located at the bottom of this slide. Uh, if you go to the uh, bayrunresidential.org site, there is also a pop-up and you can uh, email them. Um, they are in fact there to answer very technical questions for you, help you select uh, the right contractor for the project that you have uh, involved or for the work that you need done. And they can refer you to some of the other programs and financing and so on and so forth. They're there to help you at a very detailed uh, level with regard to the issues that you may want to do. Next. Uh, various ways of getting started. Visit the bayrenresidential.org site, um, locate a contractor, give them a call or contact the energy advisor or, uh, and you'll find at the end of this particular presentation this evening, uh, that you can uh, contact Damien or me um, and we'll be able to uh, send you off in the right direction as well. Next slide. At this time, uh, what I would like to do, um, Larry, are you with us this evening? Yes, I am, I'm standing by. Aha, uh -huh. okay. Uh, if uh, we could uh, let Larry my, uh, come on. Larry, Larry is one of the approved contractors for uh, the Bayren program. His company, Electrify My Home, specializes in doing complete electrification of homes. And uh, this evening, he will be uh, both introducing you to his uh, company as well as uh, discussing a case study, a recent uh, job that was done in the El Cerrito area in which uh, several uh, gas appliances and uh, gas utilities were switched out for electrification units. And uh, it was a project that also received Bayren uh, rebates. So uh, Larry, um, if you're there, I'd uh, like you to take over at this point. All right, thank you once again, Doug, for inviting me to this. I love doing these. I love getting the word out about electrification and just comfy, cozy homes. Um, Doug said, I'm, I'm Larry Waters. This is my company. I just wanna explain a little bit about why to choose Electrify My Home. I've been in the business for 35 years. We've done 
hundreds of electric systems all over the Bay Area. I'm certified through uh, BPI, which is Building Performance Institute. I also hold several uh, NATE certifications and uh, I'm on the board of the Decarbonization Coalition. So I get super into the details on this stuff. Uh, we offer a 100% comfort guarantee and we're the first company that's really dedicated all of our services only to electrification. Uh, we work pretty easily if you want to reach out and, and, um, and get some information from us. We, you, you give us a call um, or send us your email address and the, we send you out a nice welcome email that brings you to my website where you fill out a really cool no visit energy assessment form. We review those forms. We look at a little bit of data online and uh, we call you up and we do a virtual uh, uh, energy assessment on every project first. And that's to, you know, nowadays kind of keeping safe is a big deal, but also not using carbon driving all over the Bay Area just to uh, tell people about certain things or answer questions. It, it makes a nice way for us to spend a little bit of time. Uh, then if, if everything is good, we'll come out and measure and quote, we'll get you on the schedule, we'll install and test, and we're always here for ongoing support. Next slide, please. This project that we're going to outline today is uh, Rebecca Milliken, and she is really tuned into the electrification movement as she is uh, on the sustainability outreach team there at, in uh, City of Berkeley. And where I met her on the electrification group in Berkeley. And uh, she has a really cool story and a great house down in, uh, down in El Cerrito. And you notice at the bottom of the slides, each slide is going to have a, uh, just a, a direct quote. Next slide, please. The house is a is a, a cute house down there in uh, Norvell Street. It was built in 1948. It's about 1,050 square feet. She already had uh, R44 blown in insulation in the attic when we got there. Um, she was on a quest to decarbonize. She had a gigantic 60,000 BTU furnace in this in this tiny little house. That is, um, I mean, that's just so big compared to what we put in. It's it's. Um, I can't even explain how crazy that is, right? But it happens every day. People in houses just like this enter into contracts for new furnaces of the same size, which are dramatically oversized. She had a 40 gallon gas water heater in there. She hadn't used the furnace for a number of years because some rodents got into the, into the ductwork. So she was kind of using uh, some plug-in heaters, which use a lot of energy. And uh, well, I don't think she's very comfortable. She's gonna be able to tell you about that in a minute. Um, the water heater, when we went and pulled it out and put a new heat pump water heater in her garage, we found that there was a lot of issues that may, she may have not have realized were issues with that water heater. And we set her up with the best system to uh, solar offset. Next slide, please. This is the water tank that we pulled out. On the right here, you're going to see the beautiful new uh, heat pump water heater we put in, this, this high-tech Marvel nice quiet unit out in the garage where it's not gonna cause any problems. And these three pictures that you see here on the left, these are all uh, the top of her existing water heater that we pulled out. And there's some indicators here. And I really want, if there's a takeaway from this meeting tonight is everybody that's on this should go check out the top of their water heater and make sure they don't have any of these signs going on. Because if they do, you need to get on the horn really quickly because these can be dangerous. There's uh, scorch lines on the piping that what these all indicate is that the exhaust from the water heater is coming into the house at least part of the time. And that's a seriously dangerous situation. So uh, we put in a new Rude Pro, Pro 50 gallon water heater. Uh, it costs less to operate than a typical new gas water heater. I think if we could zoom in on that uh, energy guide right there, you would be able to see we can't. But you would be able to see that this is $105 a year on the energy guide. A new 50 gallon gas water tank is about 265 a year to operate. This will give you zero carbon output. And she's gonna experience this very soon this summer. She's gonna have a nice cool garage to, to go out into and do her laundry. And she won't have to worry about that anymore. 
Um, if you kind of zoom into the picture again, just focus on at the bottom, there's a mixing valve down there. And what we do with the mixing valve is in order to get more capacity out of these water heaters, we turn up the temperature and then we adjust down the temperature on the bottom. So we have a lot of stored really hot water. And then when we deliver it to the house, we mix it with cold water. So it's at a safe temperature and it really extends the capacity of these water heaters pretty dramatically. Next slide, please. This furnace was so big, it was so big, uh, 60,000 BTUs. When I'm installing 60, well, I don't install gas anymore anyway, but if I was to put a 60,000 BTU heat pump in, it would be in like a 26 or 2,800 square foot house. This is a ridiculously oversized furnace. It had a 14 inch return air. And what that means is the air that goes into the furnace was really small and a lot of air going through there. It made all kinds of noise. It was really, really loud. And it was a 1200 cubic feet per minute of air moving through this thousand square foot house. And uh, the system we put in moves just 600 CFM of air. So really, really quiet. She'll be able to tell you in a second how quiet that is. Next slide, please. So proper sizing, and I can't emphasize this enough. If you're talking to an HVAC contractor of any sort and they are not doing a real load calculation on your house, you need to stop the conversations right away and call one of us that will. It ensures good comfort and it helps us install small. You wouldn't believe how little heating and cooling capacity a house in the Bay Area really needs. Her system, we reduced the system capacity two thirds from a 60 to an 18,000 BTU. That saves cost over time as well as installation cost. Load calculations for room by room airflow, properly sized ductwork. You can see my guys over in this left hand picture working under her house diligently. Um, and if everybody had one of these wonderful white liners under their house before we came and worked on them, that would be awesome, but Rebecca did. Uh, existing floor ducts were adapted to use the new system that made it convenient. We downsized everything. So that made it really less, less uh, costly and more efficient. And we put a giant, remember I said the furnace had a little return air. We put a giant return air on this little system. So it makes the systems almost impossible to hear. You can't even really hear them running. It's crazy. And this is our guy standing out in front of the house over here, putting all the materials together in the street. So we know we can get them sealed up right. And then we drag them under the house and we assemble the final process. So that really helps us get everything in there very tightly. Next slide, please. Good electrification is important. Electrification is one thing. If you want to switch all your appliances over to electric, uh, I think it's a great thing to do. If you live in California and you plan on staying here a long time, you're going to have to do this at some point, but you need to use a contractor that understands it. There are some of us out there. You putting a heat pump in your house from the wrong contractor could end up using way more breaker space and electrical capacity than you really need to. So by having one of us look at it, we can help you design a plan for good electrification. Uh, this particular system we installed in her house only required one circuit breaker. Uh, it's a two poles, two switches, 20 amps, but we're running that entire system off of 20 amps. It uses 50% less energy than a typical heat pump does. And um, it's smaller and less complex than the wall units. A lot of uh, typical HVAC contractors, when you talk about mini splits, they're gonna to wanna to put a unit on each wall in the house. This is way less complicated, works way better, less costly. Um, and it adapts to all seasons. These units that we install, they speed up and slow down. So we can size them for whatever season. As you improve your house and do things like get new windows, get new insulation, these systems will automatically adjust their capacity to be the right size for your house, no matter what the conditions. Next slide, please. This really sums it up here. We've got, uh, starting at the left, we've got a really big return air for super quiet operation. We've got an awesome MERV 13 filter in here. So she can shut all her windows during those smoke events and turn this system on and be cozy and comfortable and not have to worry about the, the smoke coming in the air or having the windows open or running all those other filters. Then we have our air handling unit, which is moving air through the house. We have brand new ductwork. And what do we have inside the house? Really, really comfortable homeowners. Next slide, please. 
we'd like Rebecca to put some of these in her own words. Can we, can we uh, demutify Rebecca? Hi, Hi Rebecca. Larry. Hi, Larry. How you doing? I'm, I'm doing great. Thanks. It seems like forever since I've seen you. Yeah. <laughs> So put into your own words, what, 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 what was your feeling about this entire process and where'd you go with it? And sure. Let me, let me just tell folks who are, who are on the call. Um, as Larry said, I do work for the city of Berkeley and I've been talking about electrification, doing outreach for it. So I, I knew, knew a lot, but I'm here tonight just in my, wearing my personal hat. I'm just here as a Contra Costa resident and passionate about it and want to share that with you. So um, you know, it's, it's been a slow process and, and I'm kind of glad we waited because now there are those great Bay Run rebates that were not available earlier when we were looking at this. But a really exciting thing happened last week. Um, we sold our gas dryer. That was the last gas appliance. And I'm just hanging my laundry for the moment. And um, that's my husband who is capping, turning off the gas. And then we had set up with PG&E to come and for free, they um, capped it at the street. They dealt with all the permits with the city, brought in a team, and they took out our gas meter. So we are totally off gas. And we did that for a few reasons. We didn't have a, um, what do you call that, a shutoff valve. So our, now our home is safer in terms of an earthquake. And um, we can also, uh, even though Larry was able to put in that heat pump water heater and that new um, furnace and AC on our, our electrical panel, we want to get some more electric appliances. We want to upgrade. Now we can do it in the same exact spot before it was too close to the gas line and we would have had to relocate it, which would have been expensive. So um, we're really excited to, uh, to go all electric. And I'll just say that working with Larry was just, it was so easy. Um, the team was available, great communications you know, from the office. They were um, in and out in over a few days with minimal disruption in our house. I mean, we, we're all working from home and my kids are on Zoom school. And I think they just had to shut down the water for an hour, you know, the whole, the whole thing. So it was all done outside and um, it, was, it was just a really great experience. Wow, thank you. Those are some really kind words, Rebecca. Um, it's nice to deal with people uh, that are... Um, that, that have a little information and know what's going on and be able to be part of the, the whole solution. Um, it, it's really great to be part of the Bayrin program. Uh, Rebecca got a nice, uh, let's do the next slide, please. Um, Rebecca got a nice rebate. Um, looks like the heat pump water heater was $1,000. And then there was some other for downsizing and duct work. And uh, this is a nice quote from her here on this uh, bottom part. Uh, I do like seeing my name in that part as being able to help you, Rebecca. That was super cool. Um, next slide. And we're here for you at Electrify My Home. If you want to get a hold of us, we work in most of the East Bay areas. Uh, like I said, if you want to get us your email, we'll send you a no visit energy assessment form. Then we review the form. We call you up and do a virtual energy assessment so you don't have to worry about a bunch of strangers walking around in your house. Um, and uh, it's fun and it's, uh, it's cool and you learn a lot about your house. And we do have a service area that we work within, but give us a call and, and we'll see if we can work for you. Great, excellent. Thank you very much, Larry. Thank you, Rebecca. I really appreciate it. Uh, for the homeowners this evening, uh, the contact information for Larry uh, will be on a slide during the Q&A portion of the evening. Uh, so his contact information will be there for quite a, quite a long time for you to copy down. Uh, at this point, uh, I would like to ask uh, our next contractor, Arlen Roberts with uh, Mason BPP or Building Perf uh, Performance Professionals BPP uh, to uh, come online and uh, talk a little bit about uh, BPP. They are more of a general contractor. So there's uh, certain aspects of uh, retrofitting your home which uh, BPP can handle. Um, and so it's a, it's a good counterpoint to uh, uh, Larry and Electrify My Home Services. Arlen, appreciate it. Hello, uh, my name is Arlen, uh, Arlen Roberts. Uh, I'm here with the Building Performance Professionals um, as part of um, 
Can you guys hear me all right? I'm not, I can't tell if my, uh... there we go. So we're, um, so we started, um, we're a general contractor. Um, we started uh, in the general construction industry about 50 years ago. Um, you know, worked on a myriad of projects for a, di a diverse group of uh, clients. Um, you know, we in 2009 diversified and become more energy upgrade oriented. And that's where the building performance uh, professionals came along. Um, you know, we're trying to hone our skills, um, make sure that we, you know, live up to like a home plus stipulations um, from the Bay Ran program and things like that. Um, one of the ways we've done that um, and maintained um, our, our abilities over the years um, is being a BPI Gold Star contractor. Um, so in, in, in doing that, um, you know, we're a building analyst, a multifamily analyst, um, and also the building envelope um, professional. So um, this education um, and the training um, prepares us for a scientific approach um, when it comes to working in your home and, and trying to meet like lead uh, construction requirements or the Bay Ren Home Plus program. Um, where we, you know, try to get you as, as much rebates from uh, PG&E and, and the state, um, who, how that works, um, to get you as much of the 5000 that's offered um, during the work that we offer. So um, I know um, just to talk a little bit about how we do that, um, some of the elements of home performance. Um, I actually can't see my slides, so I don't know if, if um, I'm doing something wrong or if um, I'm just not seeing them. But um, anyhow, I'll just keep going. There they go. So the four elements of home performance, um, they talk real quick, um, heat flow, um, air flow, moisture control, and air quality. Um, these are kind of the biggies, right? Um, all four of them make up the home performance. Um, looking at the pictures there, you can see an infrared camera. Um, that's not x-ray. You don't get to like see through the buildings or anything like that. Um, but it's really important that you you work that uh, device in conjunction with the blower door test that you'll see below it um, in the airflow picture there. Um, when we hook up the blower door test, we're testing for air infiltration um, to see if it's coming from your crawl space, your attic, um, and how that can affect your home's um, heat or comfort load, um, as well as bringing in moisture or, or even affecting the indoor air quality. Um, some of the ways, I mean, I can break these down a little bit further. I know I'm kind of short for time, so I'll try to be quick, but um, when we're talking heat flow, there's three ways that heat really flows. And it's kind of the number one thing most homeowners think they need um, to start. Um, kind of like Larry spoke to it. He uh, had a big 60,000 BTU furnace. Um, some people say, how much does it cost to go up to 100,000, right? And, and it's kind of the wrong direction that, that we'd be headed. Um, I'm sure he would love to see it as much as I would, um, even smaller units than we have now. We're currently installing like one ton units or two ton units, much smaller, even a one and a half or two and a half ton units, um, as opposed to just full jumps um, in tonnage um, and sizing that equipment. Um, that all affects airflow and static pressure in the ducts. Um, so definitely want, um, a professional to come and handle your ACA manuals, um, any kind of sizing, load calculations, duct design, um, building performance is all wrapped up in, into all of that. Um, e even when we're talking like an air barrier system, such as air sealing, insulation, and, and even your duct work being properly sealed and not just attached with the old um, like gray duct tape, right? Um, that's why we call it an air barrier system. Um, it's an assemblage of materials, um, which includes every joint, seam, and penetration, right? So um, being a BPI Gold Star contractor, we think about all of those things, um, try to be mindful in, in every approach, right? Um, even when we're talking moisture control, um, right on down to um, every part of that duct work, um, having the duct runs to a boot. That boot is metal. So we want to insulate that with a mylar bubble wrap. Um, so we don't have warm air um, condensating on a cold metal boot and uh, maybe staining the sheetrock or something silly like that at the register. And, and I've even seen it in new homes before. So it's not an uncommon thing. Um, it's just something that we, we want to be mindful for, right? Um, 
I know the last um, and most important thing um, that I usually like to talk about is the air quality. Um, the air quality is, um, as it was already mentioned earlier, we spend a lot of our time indoors. Um, air quality, we're cooking, we're cleaning, um, just being, um, and some of that, it, it just makes for, for bad air if it's not addressed and treated properly, right? Um, so we like to, um, we like to make sure that when we're doing our retrofit measures, um, the best MERV rated filtration that can fit your, um, that can like fit your system that you're going for or that you're trying to keep and maintain um, can be applied. And um, there are other message, um, other um, ways to address um, these, these uh, get these effects out for the air quality um, beyond just the, the MERV filters, right? Um, we do offer um, a device like the, the iWave device, um, which kind of ionizes the air, makes small particles bigger, um, so they can actually be caught by the filter, um, things like that. Um, it gets rid of smoke, so it goes great come um, fire season that will be coming normal now. Um, things like that help keep our indoor air um, clean. Um, and could you go to the next slide, please? Sorry, I should be asking. Um, so one of the ways that we, um, another one of the ways that we do this is with home energy audits. Um, it's, you know, any old buddy can come in with experience and say, oh, I've been seeing this for, you know, 50 years or 30 years, I've been seeing this and I've been doing it this way. What does this guy who's um, maybe spent a week in a class and got certified for it, um, what does he know, right? And um, so, he may have been doing it for 30 years or 50 years even. Um, maybe he's been doing it the wrong way, right? Um, perhaps this new kid on the block that's maybe only spent a week in class or whatever, he's certified though. Um, he knows perhaps the right way to do it the first time now, right? He doesn't have to spend 30 years learning how to do it the right way. Um, and so that's a great way um, that, that we can, um, affect that change right is um with your your home energy audit prioritize your projects um it lets us know where where we can do the most benefit for you um i like to stay involved with my clients um i i do um as best as i can um to, to keep up with everybody and, and answer all of their questions it's one of the reasons why i'm participating here tonight to try and answer um as many as i'm able um if you can go uh, to the next slide so this is, um, I just wrap it up by telling you when we do a new installation, um, you, you can see all of our um, services there on the screen. Um, we offer a lot more than just um, your, your everyday average standard HVAC, right? Um, and so, so one of the things that we do offer is um, your first one is free. And um, once you're a part of our team, um, and, and one of our client base, um, then we give you after your new install, um, a free visit um, six months later, just to do like a safety checkup on that install, make sure it's living up to the standards that we designed it to, um, and make sure that your carbon footprint remains as, as low as we promised you it would be, right? Because um, for some of us, that is the most important um, step, right? Is our, our carbon footprint, so. And I, uh, that's it for me. Um, I, I just trying to be as quick as possible. So hopefully I get to spend uh, more time talking with uh, the rest of you. Absolutely. Thank you very much, uh, Arlen. And uh, yes, we're going to open this up. Uh, we call this the contractor round table. Uh, we have some questions that have been coming in from the homeowners this evening. Um, and uh, I'd like to direct those questions to uh, Arlen and to Larry, uh, or potentially other people who are here this evening. Uh, so uh, contact information for both of our contractors, uh, Electrify My Home and Building Performance Professionals is here on the screen. Uh, that information will remain on the screen for uh, the remainder of the time. Uh, just to quickly cover a couple of the questions that came in. Uh, one question with regard to property tax. Uh, the rebate doesn't come from the property tax. Uh, the rebate is in fact, this is money. Think of it as, as kind of the same as if you go down and you buy a toaster and you get a coupon that you send in and you get $10 back against the purchase price. 
uh, in this particular case, uh, you have the work done on your house. There is a certain cost that uh, comes from the contractor and from the equipment which is being put in. And the rebate covers a portion of that cost. So you can look at it as being an incentive uh, to help you make the decision to uh, do the upgrade. Of course, over time, you also get the benefit of uh, better indoor air quality, uh, better comfort and lower energy bills. So there's several different things um, to answer on that. Uh, the PACE program actually offers a way to finance the larger projects by adding uh, or basically uh, financing the cost as an addition to your property tax bill. But uh, it works out to be very, very favorable to the homeowner over say putting it on a credit card. Uh, Colleen, I believe you had a uh, something you wanted to add to that answer. I don't have an addition. I do have one other question to refer to you. Aha, uh -huh. okay. So Ryan asked, I'm doing a large remodel and would like to upgrade all appliances, including water heater and furnace to be electric. However, my general contractor says we don't have the amps to do this. Can you run a 3000 square foot house on 200 amps with no gas appliances? Uh, that one, definitely Larry, uh, could you uh, answer that one, please? You absolutely can. The contractor may not be understanding the technologies we would use. And I think I addressed that a little bit earlier, talking about Rebecca's system. Um, if we use the right heat pump systems for, for heating and cooling, um, they use a tiny bit of breaker space and we can break those out into sub panels. So 200 amps on a 3000 square foot house is easy if it's done thoughtfully. So that's the answer. Thank you. Um, next question that I see here is, uh, how does this work inside an HOA? Um, and I'm, I'm assuming this is a situation, for example, a townhome uh, where uh, the homeowner, in fact, owns the particular unit. Um, basically, uh, at least I, I live in a homeowner uh, association townhomes, and uh, I'm responsible for repairs and upgrades to all the appliances and uh, other equipment in my home. And uh, you would be eligible for the appropriate uh, rebates uh, from Bayren. Uh, so the HOA frac frankly doesn't enter into it in this particular case. Can I comment on that, Doug? I was, yes, yeah, I was gonna say. Uh, go ahead, go ahead, Arlen. Yeah, I, I just wanted to say, so we, we work with HOAs also. Sometimes they, they request like um, design plans and things like that. And so um, it's, it's kind of um, in, imperative that you, you work with them, make sure that uh, everybody's happy, not just your homeowner, right? Because they do ultimately have to live there. And the other thing that you need to consider too is once again, goes back to the type of equipment you're installing. A lot of the homeowners association have even higher uh, um, uh, lines for sound ordinance. So like a lot of them want systems that are gonna be under 50 decibels and you won't be able to get that with the traditional unitary piece of equipment. We do have equipment that can get down to 42 to 47. So I, we've seen those couple of things pop up recently. So I just wanna add that to it, Doug. Thank you, I appreciate that. Uh, actually come to think of it, uh, depending upon the homeowners association and the equipment, uh, some of it may be placed on the outside walls. And at the point where you start hanging stuff outside uh, the interior of the building, uh, many of the homeowners associations will want to uh, at least pass judgment through the architectural committee or something like that. Uh, question, um, and I'm not sure here, but uh, yeah, home, uh, how much should a homeowner expect an energy assessment to cost? And I, because we've got two contractors, perhaps uh, I'm sure each of you has a different approach to this. Uh, 2,000 square foot house, what would an energy assessment cost for that, uh, Arlen? Um, so for that, um, that size residence, um, I believe you'd be looking at $600 for a home assessment. Um, usually comes with about a 28 to 35 page report um, that, that accompanies that, um, can let you know 
how how to lower your carbon footprint, where your energy score is, how to lower it, um, even make solutions since we are a, a general that specializing in, in energy upgrades kind of help you prioritize those as well. And I believe there's even um, a rebate that is offered on energy assessments too for the homeowner, so. Yes, uh, Larry, how would you approach it? Um, you know what, we, we always start with a virtual assessment and we'll get on the line with them on, uh, on some sort of a camera bearing device, walk around the house, make some basic suggestions. And depending on the complexity of the issue, then we'll come out and do further work like blower door and duct pressure testing and all that to get around that. But what, we, what we've found is, and there is a charge for that if we come out and do a full on energy audit and do a snug report and all that. Um, but the virtual assessment's a nice way to get a ballpark about what you're gonna do. In most cases, I'm able to give them a range of pricing um, before we ever set foot in the house. And, and we're just trying to keep everybody safe and cut down the carbon it costs to drive from point A to point B. Thank you. Um, and uh, to refresh my memory, what is the rebate that's available through uh, Bayren for the energy assessment? Um, I, I believe it's a two hundred dollar rebate, um, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Damien, I don't know if you're on. Is that something that? Uh, it, I may be confusing that with another program, but I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure I thought it was Bay Ring. Okay, thank you. Um, returning to a question that was answered uh, a little bit earlier in writing, uh, all the materials that have been presented this evening will be sent out to everybody who registered for the workshop uh, in about a week to 10 days. Uh, we'll send out an email which will include attachments and uh, transcripts of these questions and so on and so forth. So. Uh, all this information will be available. And in fact, the uh, presentation has been recorded and that will be made available through a YouTube channel as well. Uh, earlier question with regard to the age of the furnace, uh, it's not the age per se. I, I know Larry was talking about the problems with the furnace uh, in Rebecca's home, uh, which I think that furnace had pretty well reached the end of its useful life in any case, but uh, the, the determination for uh, the rebate is based on efficiency. And I believe it's 16 or 17 sear on a furnace unit. And uh, uh, again, I think it's, it's above code. And so if you've got a furnace uh, that's probably more than about 10 or 15 years old, uh, the new efficiency standards on any of the equipment would be above what you've got and then could conceivably qualify for uh, for a rebate. And just to add to that, they're always too big. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> they're always, have you ever found one at Arlen that was the right size, a gas Never. furnace? No, no. Yeah. They, well, and that's part of it is that in fact, uh, yeah, it's the efficiency of the unit, but you can also get a rebate for downsizing. So yeah, uh, if you're moving from two tons cap uh, capacity down to one ton capacity, uh, there can be a rebate there for that as well. So the, and, and the so cost of operation is less too because you're you're moving the heat rather than generating it with the heat pump. Yeah, and well, you only and, have to turn up the TV when you're watching your stories and the furnace comes on. Right. Right. Well, and and so one of the reasons that you have to work through an approved contractor is that uh, understanding all of these different uh, finer points, the specifications and how they're additive across several different measures, which you may do. Uh, the contractor is the person who's going to make sure that you get the full uh, rebate back. A uh, question was asked, uh, how is the P, uh, rebate paid or uh, what's it attached to? So think of this as being any home improvement project, such as remodeling your kitchen or getting a paint job done. And so there's a contractor comes out, does the work, and um, most of the contractors will uh, show the Bayren rebates that uh, would attach to the work as part of the quote. And then of course, basically what happens is that the homeowner is responsible for payment to the contractor. Uh, the rebate comes from the county.
Uh, let's see the question here. Um, Larry, perhaps you could, uh, there's a question here regarding the MERV 14 uh, filter, uh, just to uh, put that into words for everybody. Uh, is the MERV 14 adequate for SARS COVID? Well, a MERV rating on a filter is a, is a capture rating and it's really for particles. And these, um, these small virus germs, I guess you would call them, they're, they're way smaller than one of those filters can do. You really need a kill technology or a capture and a cluster technology like Arlen was talking about earlier, which is the new Calgon iWave is a, is a great example of that. It actually puts positive and negative ions into the airspace and they, they reach out and find these things and they cluster them together and they make them big enough for the filter to catch. But you're not gonna catch that stuff moving, especially depending on what size your system is, how long your, your cycles are, how much air you're moving and how quickly it is moving across the filter all take into consideration, but mostly they're not gonna catch viruses. You need to kill technology. Thank you. Uh, there was a question with regard to uh, how did the Bayren rebates uh, compare on Rebecca's project versus the, the full cost of the project? And the rebates were, uh, I believe $2,050 or was it $2,150? Right around $2,000. And uh, apparently the full cost uh, of the work that was done is approximately 19,000. So the rebates do not cover uh, the full cost of uh, the upgrades, uh, but the advantages come from not only the improved comfort of the home, uh, but the long-term reductions in your energy costs. Now with regard to financing, there is nothing that prevents a person from taking advantage both of the rebates from Bayran, as well as the uh, collateral financing opportunities through PACE or through the REAL program or uh, HERO. So uh, those can be combined to uh, basically cover the entire cost, cost of the program. Uh, Something to remember there, Doug, if you don't mind. The, sure. um, Rebecca did not have an existing air conditioning system. So she didn't qualify through the Bayran program for a rebate on the heat pump. If, if we're doing this in a home where they have an existing air conditioner, that's an additional thousand dollar rebate. And generally what we've found is the rebates are between 10 and 18 to 20% of the total job cost, depending on what the customer has in their home at the time. So that's a good number to, it's, it's, it's about a good 10% cash back. Um, we have a question from Ryan. He will be asking it out loud. Hi, um, I asked the question earlier about the um, 3,000 square foot house uh, remodel. I, um, I was trying to better understand the heat pump. So um, currently we have gas water and a gas furnace and then you know the AC condenser outside. Um, I read that heat pumps require at least 1,000 square feet and uh, and then can you clarify, is the heat pump for heating water and heating air, like kind of replacing the furnace or, or both? And um, how does that work? Um, so we, there is heat pump water heating units that replace your typical gas tank water heater. And there's also split system type heat pump water heaters where the unit goes outside and the storage tank goes inside. And that's if you have um, space issues or you want to move it to a more discrete location. Um, but the heat pump technology, we in particular don't use traditional heat pump technology. We use inverter heat pump technology based on mini split platform. And we can, we can um, size one of these systems to fit almost any building envelope, whether it be a single system or multiple smaller systems for zoning. And our systems typically use one breaker to provide power to one unit. And then that unit provides power to the inside part of the unit. So there's only one electrical hookup on the type of heat pumps we use. That's called a mini split platform. Uh, there's also unitary, which is like your train and carrier and, and the bigger brands where you got the big box outside 
and you got the big air handler on the inside. And a lot of the contractors are going to want to stick a big old strip heater in there. Because remember, HVAC contractors don't understand how to size your system. We all should. But, and, and Arlen will tell you, none of them do. None of us do. Us, we do. But most don't. The, um, typically, if you have a circuit going out to your outdoor unit right now, we can use that same circuit to run up to three heat pumps that we install. And so you can do three different zonal systems with three different separate units in different parts of your house off that one circuit that's running your existing air conditioner. And a lot of times, depending on how big your air conditioner is now, we can run one outdoor heat pump and we can run one indoor heat pump water heater off that same circuit too. So there's a lot of options. We don't need to just look at the, the cut and dry black and white, what the contractors are experienced with because that's, that's not what we're trying to do for what we call good electrification. And if I can add even on um, for heat pumps, the mini split heat pumps um, come in so many different options from the high wall unit to a recess unit, a floor console, ducted can hide away in the attic. You never have to see it. You have a, a plethora of options for mini splits. Okay, and, and uh, I, I'm sorry, um, just to make sure I understand when you talk of the heat pump, uh, you're speaking of the technology and can it be used both for the heating and cooling as well as for uh, the water heating? Is that correct? Are you asking, are those different units? Yeah, I was curious if those are different units. And then also, is there like a space requirement? I read that they, they need a thousand square feet of like open space to operate. I think you're thinking of a, a heat pump water heater, like in a garage. So if you were going to put okay. one in a, a self-contained heat pump water heater in a small space, and they could be vented out. If you don't have adequate uh, cubic footage of air space around it, we can vent it to another space. So um, it just depends on what you have in your application. But if you're really crunched for space and we need to put it, there's a split system. The, the heat pump water heater is outside and a, and a standalone tank goes inside. And then there's no requirements for space whatsoever. Okay. Uh, as, as was mentioned on Rebecca's home, uh, by putting the water heater out in the garage, her garage is going to be uh, air conditioned during the summer months because basically, again, as the heat is moved into the water, uh, the space around the water heater is cooled. And so uh, the garage becomes quite cool. And so I think that's the thousand foot requirement. And yes, if you don't have a thousand square feet or if you don't want it cooled, then you would vent it to the outside. And it's a thousand cubic feet. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. That, that makes sense. Yeah. In, in my particular case, it's, it's, uh, we are down to studs and starting to build. And um, my, my general contractor just doesn't have experience with this stuff. So we were going to put in all gas and um, trying to put the brakes on that while I can. And I do think we're early enough that I can. And go um, go electric, uh, but he was the one saying that 200 amps is not enough. So I filled out your form. Um, I look forward to chatting uh, offline. Great, thanks. Uh, which by the way, uh, something for everybody, uh, if you fill out the survey at the end this evening, uh, there is an opportunity to uh, request that the energy advisor contact you. Uh, so, uh, we certainly encourage you to fill out the uh, survey because it helps us improve the quality of these presentations. And at the same time, you can also uh, proactively uh, request an energy advisor to contact you to follow up. Uh, question uh, regarding disaster preparedness, uh, talking about power outages, planned or unplanned, uh, and the fact that electric uh, devices will go offline, uh, what are the recommendations with regard to backup on that? And that, uh, that's to both of you. Oh, um, uh, well, your furnace, I'll let get, I'm sorry, Arlen. The, right. uh, your furnace doesn't run without electricity now. So unless you have a wall furnace heating your house, you're not gonna have heat anyway. But with the water heaters there, we, we, we do a special mixing valve system on there. We run the temperature of the water heater itself up very high and then we mix it to a lower temperature before it goes into your house. That way, if the power does go off, you have a lot of hot water available to you. Um, if, the, if the water is off for multiple, or the power's off for multiple days, 
that's a challenge. That's, but it's part of what California is moving to there. And I don't think we got that deeply into it today, but we need to decarbonize millions of homes in California to meet the 20, 30, 40% reduction goal. Um, so there's technology that will be available. Like a lot of people will be switching over to solar and batteries and that sort of thing. And if you put a battery system in, you can always run your water heater off the battery, but that's just the way California is going. If you're going to be living here, you're going to have to deal with it sooner or later. There's a lot of carrots out there right now that'll help you deal with it. If you wait too long, it's going to be nothing but sticks. Well, and, and there are battery backups, but of course, those have a limited life with regard to being able to replace uh, other power sources. Over Absolutely. Place. So, Absolutely. Question, interesting one here. Uh, uh, this individual says, I have a ranch style L-shaped home with two gas furnaces. Would I be, uh, would each unit be eligible for a rebate? Not through the current, the way the program is worded currently. I don't think so. But I, I do. You, you can't double up, right? I don't believe so, but you mm. would get the bonus rebate maybe for lessening the load because uh, guarantee it's oversized. Yeah. And typically if it's a single story house, we may be able to, you know, you may be able to put it into one system or, mm -hmm. you know, do a single outdoor heat pump unit that controls two indoor units so we can control it still split and you get that that nice rebate there. So there's a lot of, a lot of ways we can deal with it. Um, if the house has air conditioning now, there's certainly more options as far as rebate dollars as well. For sure. Great. There's a question here. Uh, actually, it came in through the chat line. Um, question about cooking. And I'm assuming that is uh, a question as to whether or not there are rebates for uh, cooking appliances. And yes, you can replace a gas cooktop not an electric cooktop, but a gas cooktop with an induction cooktop. Uh, and that's a $300 rebate for that particular uh, replacement. Uh, we have about five more minutes. Uh, if you have any further questions, we'd be happy to answer them. Um, or if not, we can uh, begin to wrap things up and let everybody go back to their evening. Uh, if we could uh, move on to the next slide, please. Uh, just to review, um, within the uh, survey for the, uh, where we're seeking your input on this evening's presentation and ideas for what we can do to improve it, there is also a request form uh, so that you can um, ask for the energy advisor to contact you directly. Uh, if you choose not to fill out the form, uh, the 800 number, 866 number is there on the screen. Uh, you can also contact the advisor uh, by email. And additional contacts, um, more general questions, not necessarily the most technical questions. Uh, please contact me either by email or by phone. Uh, Ellie um, is available and uh, she has the added bonus that she speaks very fluent Spanish. And so if you're more comfortable uh, in asking your questions or writing to us in Spanish, uh, please direct your correspondence to Ellie. She's more than capable of covering that. And Damien, uh, whom you met at the very beginning of the evening uh, is the primary contact for Contra Costa County. So he kind of oversees everything that the county is doing to support the program and uh, can certainly answer questions uh, of any detailed nature or direct you to somebody who can. Uh, anybody else have any final thoughts this evening? Uh, perhaps maybe just go around the circle. Arlen, uh, any, uh, any yeah. thoughts? Yeah, um, everything that's discussed here, of course, kind of just the tip of the building science iceberg. Um, there's a lot of layers to consider during a retrofit project. Um, they're often unique to your location and the residents that live in the building. Um, make sure your contractor's considering those. Great, thank you. Larry? 
Uh, you can't pick your system out of a pretty book with a price next to it. Every house is unique and every house needed to be, every customer is unique in the way they live in their homes. We don't offer cookie cutter solutions and neither does uh, BPP. Um, every house is not the same. You can't just have the same system everybody else has and expect to be satisfied or have it be energy efficient. Thank you. Uh, Ellie, any observations or thoughts this evening? Uh, we just wanna thank you all for attending. Um, please take this survey that was sent in the chat. We appreciate any feedback you all are willing to provide us. Um, and like Doug mentioned, if you have any questions in Spanish, um, please contact me and I will try and help. And then um, in Spanish, uh, muchas gracias por venir a nuestro taller hoy. Um, si ustedes tienen preguntas, me pueden contactar. Um, aquí tengo mi uh, número de teléfono y también mi uh, correo electrónico. Um, si tiene cualquier pregunta, um, por favor, contáctame. Y sí, muchas gracias. <laughs> gracias. Uh, Colleen, any thoughts? Anything else turning up? I think you all summed it up very well. We're grateful for everyone who attended and learned with us tonight. We appreciate all your time. And uh, I don't know, is Damien still with us this evening? Yeah, I'm still here. Still here. Just want to say uh, thanks for everyone from for attending and I hope you enjoyed this and this was extremely informative. So um, if you have any big picture policy concerns or issues, you can uh, contact me. My contact information is there on the on the slide. But thank you for attending, everyone. Great. I second everybody's comments. We appreciate you taking the time this evening. Uh, we hope that you found this very useful uh, to the panelists. We appreciate your time and thank you for sharing your expertise. Thank you. Uh, thank you.